Peter and Sally Gans were in love with art. So much so that although they never had all the money in the world, they put a good deal of what they did have into works they wanted to be able to see and live with every day on the walls of their own rooms. They were very discerning, too, buying for thousands paintings that are now worth millions. How many millions? The world will learn at an auction here in New York in about a week's time. The amazing thing is not that these paintings finally are leaving home. The amazing thing, as Morley Safer tells us now, is that they remained at home and were part of the family for so long. The view, as they say in New York, is to die for. Yet visitors to this apartment could be forgiven for not noticing. It is the walls that are truly stunning. At every turn, yet another Picasso. One is overwhelmed when you come into this apartment because you are quite literally surrounded by these treasures. There was a sense of real casualness and a routine about having this kind of work in the apartment and growing up with it. That's the way they raised us. No Tony Gans grew up with this, once the world's largest collection of privately owned Picassos. As remarkable in their way were the collectors themselves. Victor and Sally Gans had a passion that had little to do with the snobbery the trophy hunting that is so much a part of the art world. These paintings were simply a vital part of family life. When I was six or eight, I uh, spent the night with a friend and came back in the morning, and my sister, I think it was, asked me uh, how it was, and I said, well, we had a great time, but I don't understand where they keep all their Picassos. Victor Gans ran his family's costume jewelry business in New York. In 1942, he married Carolyn Sally Weil of Louisville, Kentucky. Until his death in 1987 and hers earlier this year, it was a relationship that constantly challenged the prevailing winds of taste. This, I gather, is the very first Picasso your parents owned. Yes, it is. They bought it in uh, 1941. It is called The Dream. Picasso's erotic portrait of his mistress, Marie Therese, asleep. It cost $7,000. Victor was 28 years old. He bought it five months before he married Sally. It just really melts you with the sense of her contained in the armchair, having just fallen asleep dreaming, I'm sure, as far as Picasso was concerned, about him. <laughs> I gather, nonetheless, there were people who came into this house who <clears throat> felt uncomfortable. Well, when they first bought it, they hung it in the dining room, and a number of their friends said that they would prefer to eat anywhere but in the dining room as a result, or at least with their backs to the picture. Victor and Sally rejected pretty art, safe art, they went for pictures that arrest, even shock. Bird and Cat, Picasso's brutal reflection of life in occupied Paris. And an earlier masterpiece of Cubism, Woman in an Armchair, fully displays his loving contempt for women. My father, who was quite rigorous intellectually, uh, hated decorative art. He wanted pictures that forced you to do as much work as a viewer as the painter had done. Over 56 years, they bought scores of Picasso paintings, 10 drawings, five sculptures, and hundreds and hundreds of prints. The staircase is a small museum in itself. And upstairs, the so-called Red Room, a room any museum would be proud to possess. It is dedicated to four versions of Picasso's Women of Algiers. It is also a family room, a much used room, nothing of the shrine or pride of possession about it. They would meet Picasso twice, once in 1948 after buying The Dream, and again in 1970 when he presented them with two drawings as gifts. Did your mother have a crush on him? 
She said that the way he looked at her, even then when she was no longer a young woman, um, was something that only a woman of her age could understand and appreciate. The Ganses were hardly poor, but neither were they vastly rich. And by the early 60s, they could no longer afford Picasso. Yet they maintained their passion for difficult, edgy art. Young, unknown American artists now considered to be modern masters. Robert Rauschenberg, Frank Stella, the otherworldly sculptures of Eva Hess, and an obscure young man named Jasper Johns, who they befriended. In 1991, after her husband died, Sally made her first and only purchase alone, a bittersweet reflection on life by Jasper Johns. It's a double profile. Looked at one way, you see an old woman. And if you look at it another way, you see a similar profile of a young woman. So I think that for her, it was as much about memory and youth and old age as it was about anything else. In September, the collection that Victor and Sally Gann spent a lifetime acquiring was moved to a gallery at Christie's Auction House. On November 10th, it will be broken up and sold. Overwhelming inheritance tax makes it impossible for their children, Vicky, Kate, Nancy, and Tony, to keep it intact. Why did they collect? I think Dad has described what his relationship to art is sexual. He had to have it, and it overwhelmed him. Was there anything they bought that they said, I just can't bear the sight of this any longer, get it out of here? Um, a Lichtenstein that he brought home and they hung, and after a day or two, I think, um, Mom said, I just can't live with this. With, uh, you know, it's, it's me or it. And he's got <laughs> 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 Definitely could have gone either way. <laughs> not either way, but yeah. On auction close. night, the gavel will be in the hand of Christopher Burge, chairman of Christie's, friend, admirer, yes. even student of the Ganses. He says to collect the way they did, not for vanity or potential investment, is unique. Generation. It is quite rare to be so dedicated. Victor read uh, copiously on all of these artists. He, he's, he walked around the galleries, he circled around the work that he was intent on buying, thinking about it, waiting. What do you think this collection will fetch when it goes under the hammer? As you know, we've been saying around $125 million as uh, a figure for the collection. I think it will fetch a bit more than that. But as you look at this grand collection, this reflection of a wonderful life, there is a certain sadness. This is a family's goodbye. Daughter Nancy, at a private viewing, told those gathered that after her mother died, she found a note placed in a favorite book. I'd like to read what she wrote. Two days before Victor died on October 24th, 1987, my son Tony and I were sitting on either side of his bed. He seemed to be sleeping quietly. Suddenly he opened his eyes and said, the art isn't mine anymore. She went on to write, as he felt his life slipping away, so he was losing this art, his passion, which was shared by me, our four children, our six grandchildren. It will be very difficult to watch the dispersal of the collection on November 10th, but we understand that our parents were custodians of this art for a while only, and now it is time to pass these works on to others.